We opened an antique store, but it had to be family friendly, where we could work and still have fun. Sometimes you have to climb a mountain or open some new doors to find the treasures inside. This is our life. This is our adventure. This is Curiosity Inc. Morning guys, so today I thought I'd cover off um, sort of a day in the life of owning an antique store. It's uh, Saturday today and this is pretty typical for a Saturday. Um, my schedule so far it is uh, 9 in the morning. Uh, we open the doors at 11, we're open 11 to 5 p.m. But the reason I open at 11 is because I generally go out and do stuff in the morning like this. So. Uh, stop number one is uh, I'm stopping at a house um, that uh, the fellow has a bunch of stuff for sale from an estate so I'm gonna see what I can pick up there uh, then off to the store <laughs> to meet a fellow there uh, before I open who has a bunch of uh, petroleana and automotive stuff for sale and uh, yeah we'll kind of just document and film along the way today and uh, see what sort of things we pick up and what happens so uh, just waiting for this guy to show up and then uh, we'll go in and check it out so in the attic that yeah I don't want to I don't want to step on the drywall exactly okay definitely take that you, you got it yep okay I'm gonna That's for a bike, eh? it is for a bike yeah I'm gonna see if I can get to that banana seat bike over there it's definitely not much room up here Did your dad have a convertible? Because there's a convertible top off a car up here. Maybe. So this is the top frame off possibly a 67 Pontiac convertible. And if somebody, if somebody has a 67 Pontiac convertible, they'd probably want that top frame. Those things can get rusty. I'm just trying to step very carefully up here. Was it uh, Christmas vacation where he was up there watching TV and then fell through the roof? I don't want that to happen to me. <laughs> I don't have those same thoughts of safety that most people do. It takes over. These are the uh, the backing plates for those taillights. These are all RCMP beacons off the top of police cars. Just RCMP what? Beacons. Like the, the blue lights. The single dome. I wonder, I don't know if the mounts are, like the bases are up here, but there's certainly a lot of lenses. Okay. Handlebars off another bicycle over there. Maybe that one will be mine. Well, right now I just see handlebars, but no bike. Um, there are a couple boxes at the end labeled... Tupperware, but I doubt whether there's Tupperware in there. And it looks like, oh, those are maybe windows. This is all a lot of blinds and light bulbs. But I'm going to check those boxes out, carefully walk my way across okay. here. And there's only like three feet of clearance in here, so I got to be careful. Made it over to the boxes. And it is. Well, not the world's most exciting find. It's a bunch of empty old uh, milk cartons. And this, I have a feeling is the same. I mean, they're old, but I don't think there's a collector for old milk cartons. Well, there probably is, there's a collector for everything, but. Just a couple other boxes over there, but hard to see what's in them. I'm gonna work my way back. And just making sure I didn't miss anything hidden in the insulation here. There are some car parts buried. But they look like they're used car parts. Yeah, I would imagine that everything up there would be used. That's an awful lot of them though. Like that's, how many is that? One, two, three, four, five. But there's got to be like 40 or 50 of those things there. Yep. Plus the hubcaps, taillights more hubcaps, and the bike. It's a pretty good haul out of the attic, actually. There was this cool 50s Black Oceans Globe in here as well. 
Um, you can tell, of course, the age because it says USSR on it and not Russia, so it's, you know, pre-name change for Russia. Cool piece, good decorative item. Some boxes of old comic books, so we're gonna have to go through those and see if there's anything, uh, you know, super cool in there. Go through those later on. And uh, in here somewhere, there's a bunch of old uh, sports cards too from the 70s. So I'm gonna drag those in and see if there's anything good. And the stuff that was cool but not quite cool enough or didn't fit in the store is gonna go straight to auction, so I've got it loaded up and ready to go. Well, that was a lot of work climbing around in the attic. We went through the attic of the garage. Um, I did end up finding a bunch more stuff, some vintage oil cans, an old bicycle, um, a whole bunch of those police lights. I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. If anybody's watching and they feel that they need a uh, vintage, probably 1960s, 70s era blue police light, I happen to have the market cornered on those now. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff, in fact, uh, filled up a good portion of the back of my vehicle, plus he's got a truck full. I thought it was just going to be a very quick stop, quick visit, and possibly not find anything, but I was wrong. So, back to the store where I'm going to meet the fellow about the uh, Automobilia and Petroliana and uh, strike up a deal there. And then uh, the fellow's nice enough that uh, I bought the stuff from, he's going to actually deliver it to me. So, uh, busy morning so far. And uh, I open in 30 minutes, so I have to hustle. So back at the shop, uh, made it here at 10.35 a.m. The fella's here just unloading some of the uh, vintage automobilia, so we're gonna go through the boxes and see what there is. And as for the items that came in the store today, there were some vintage die-cast toys, some old Matchbox, and a couple other older ones too, like this trying Minic wind-up car from the 1930s, and this Shuko 3000, which would have originally had a steering wheel that operated it on the roof. And aside from the vintage toys that the fella brought in, we also got some cool old books, including this 1920s manual on how to convert your Model T into a tractor. Who would want to do that? This oil can might not look like much, but in fact it's very rare. It's a redhead motor oil can, which would have been printed in yellow, but this is a factory error with the yellow printed on the inside, making it quite rare and collectible. And as for the little red wagon, well, we started to clean it up, got it all put back together, and with all the years of dust removed, it started to turn out looking pretty darn good. Another unusual find today was this window frame from a 1918 Maxwell. It's gonna be hard to find a guy who's got that car, but if you need one, I've got one, so give me a call. So today was a super busy day. That little wagon that I pulled out of the attic of the house actually sold this afternoon. Somebody walked in and saw it that collects pedal cars. They thought it was an amazing find and it's gonna go back to their house. Here's another cool piece we picked up today. So that's it, I'm calling it a day, and what a day it was. From digging through attics to having cool stuff brought in the store, the thing about having a shop like this, you never know what's gonna come in and you never know what's gonna leave in a day. So it was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, make sure to tune in. You can subscribe by hitting the button up there uh, on your screen. You can also check us out on Facebook or Instagram or our website, which is www.curiosityedmonton.ca. Hope you guys have a wonderful evening and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Thank you.